According to the UNHCR, over one million migrants have arrived in Europe in 2015. Their journey is fraught with danger, and some of those risks prove fatal. It is estimated that 3,600 people died or went missing in the Mediterranean during 2015. Their families are still waiting for news of them. One of the roles of the Red Cross is to help these families find out what has happened to their missing relatives. We are in the cemetery of Mytilini in Lesbos Island where, as you can see, we have a lot of dead bodies unidentified which have been collected uh, at sea. Uh, most of the time by the Coast Guard, but often also bodies have been uh, washed to the shore and uh, they are buried here with the tombs with, with no mark, it's written incognito on them. The day before crossing or sometimes the hour just before crossing, there is always a call to the family. I'm making it today. Family, if a few hours later, one day, two days after, they don't, don't hear anything about uh, their relative, we promise to call once on the right side. Then they start wondering, it's okay, maybe something wrong happened. And then direct themselves naturally to the National Red Cross of their country or to the ICRC closer delegation. And they make what is called the tracing request, saying my son has disappeared. I'm afraid that he would have died while crossing the Mediterranean Sea. And sometimes that's the first hint that we have, which leads us to start investigating with the forensic authorities in this island or in other places. When we have a request, a tracing request about someone, um, let's say a migrant who is in Samos, most of the times, as I said, thankfully, he is alive and he can be found, but uh, sometimes he is dead, he is drowned. Most of the times he is drowned. So what I do is get in contact with the local pathologists, get the information from them, do you have a body such and such, and compare it with the information in the tracing request. But when it's an obvious case or an incident or a shipwreck, for example, uh, we are not waiting for a tracing request, but we are uh, trying to get information who was there, have you identified them, how many you have not identified, how many are missing. It's a good uh, building up of uh, information which might be useful pretty soon. Usually it is useful. Greek Coast Guards are often the first on the scene when a refugee boat sinks. So working with the Central Police DNA Laboratory in Athens, Dr. Kouvaris has been training personnel of the Hellenic Coast Guard to collect and record personal information from such sources as clothing, jewelry, or tattoos. As medical consultant, he also maintains close contact with pathologists like Dr. Pavlos Pavlidis. Dr. Pavlidis works in northern Greece where many migrants have died trying to cross the river Evros, which forms a natural border with Turkey. I have respect from these dead people. And I want the families to take the body in the, their country. For these people, I work uh, in the last 15 years, from 2000. All these years, we have uh, about 334 dead bodies. My work is to, to find the reason of death, and I make identification from these people, because from all these people, they have no documents. We have nothing, and this is our problem, identification. Dr. Pavlos Pavlidis collects the belongings and DNA of all deceased migrants in the hope of being able to identify them one day. He shares all this data with the ICRC and the Hellenic Red Cross. Cross-checking has made it possible to identify around one-third of the 334 bodies under Dr. Pavlidis's care. Most of the dead were from Syria, Afghanistan, or Pakistan. For me, or the International Red Cross, we have contact with these families. It's a very important for me to, to have a close contact with the International Red Cross. Because people, they don't know me, but they know the International Red Cross. I give information, they give me information, and we have a result. Forensics and fortunate cases don't usually go together. Uh, when we have a successful, let's say, case, it means 
uh, we can prove that someone is indeed dead and buried there, for example. It's not a happy ending, but it is an ending. The family can start mourning, they can have closure. Uh, it's better than the other, the alternative, which is not knowing ever what happened to your family. Without this mourning process, the family have to live all their life with what is called, this is a concept developed by Pauline Bowes, the ambiguous loss, not being sure that your relative is dead. Is dead or is he alive? And you have to live between two realities. The reality of thinking that this person will never come back, but still hoping that he will maybe come back, like two universes parallel. And this is very painful, very difficult for the families, and which is why we are pushing so much to develop all this technique of uh, having a common comparison of post-mortem data and anti-mortem data to maximize the possibility of getting matches, of getting positive results between family looking for uh, relative presumed dead and dead body unidentified such as those here behind me.